Hello everyone, this is Dr. Zaidi. Welcome to my YouTube channel, ZTube. Today we are going to discuss the equivalent units. Okay, so what are equivalent units? Before we discuss equivalent units, you need to understand what are our whole units. Whole units are also known as physical units. So what are physical units or whole units? Those are the number of units that you worked on during the period. So number of units in production during the period, whether or not completed. What it means is if you started, for example, working on 20,000 units and you completed only 15,000 units out of 20,000 during the period, your whole or physical units would be all 20,000 units because those include the units that you have completed, also the units in your ending work in process, whether or not completed. All right, so now what is the equivalent unit then? The equivalent units are the units that could have been completed. Now, equivalent units are not whole units, but also equivalent units are not the units that are completed. There is a difference between units completed and the units that could have been completed. Now, the easiest way to explain this is if you are working on two units, right? And each unit, let's say, require eight hours to complete. Each one independently requires eight hours to complete and you're working on two units in a day and you have only eight hours work day. Now, if you work on both units, you're going to spend four hours on one, uh, on one unit and you're going to spend four hours on another unit. Now you finish your eight hours day working on four hours and four hours on two different units. Now your day is finished with each unit 50% completed. Now, your equivalent units in this case is one unit. How? Because if you have worked on only one unit throughout the day, you could have finished that one unit, but you didn't. You worked on two units, you finished halfway, 50%, 50%, right? So none of the units are completed, but your equivalent units are is still one unit, okay? So that's how you explain the equivalent units. Now, the equivalent units are calculated for direct material and also calculated for conversion cost. What is conversion cost? Is your direct labor and your factory overhead or manufacturing overhead. Conversion cost is the cost you incur to convert your direct material into finished products. And those two costs are the cost, which is direct labor and MOH that you incur to convert your material into finished products. So uh, most likely, most companies um, use conversion cost um, however, some companies also use direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead independently and calculate equivalent units for them. Now, conversion costs are used when either your MOH is not significant or your labor is not significant. So if you are in a company that's highly machinely oriented and not enough labor is required, uh, so you can put them together in a conversion cost. If, if, on the other hand, if you have a highly labor intensive uh, manufacturing and then you don't have as much machine involved, then you can also put it together. However, if the costs are significant in either case, you can put it separately, direct material, direct labor and manufacturing overhead, and then you can um, calculate the equivalent units separately. Also, if the cost drivers are separate or different, or um, you know, manufacturing overhead is driven by machine hours and, and not direct labor hours or costs, then you can also do uh, the separate uh, direct labor and manufacturing overhead accounts. Now your equivalent units and the cost you incur depends on the moment the costs are incurred because in the production process, you can incur costs at different point in time. There is a possibility that you add all the material at the beginning of the process, right? But there's also possibility that you add material throughout the process. So just like job order costing, when you're building a house, you don't add paint at the beginning, right? You don't paint house. You have to uh, lay a floor, so you need to add a concrete at the beginning, right? You're not gonna start bringing sink and toilet bowls and bathtubs right at the beginning. You will wait until the structure is completed, then you can put those things together. So material is added at the different point in time. Similarly, in a process costing system, material is added at a different point in times 
in many companies. So for example, if you take a beverage uh, example, a Coca-Cola, right? So the first step is they are manufacturing a beverage. You are, they're adding ingredients, they're adding sugar, right? So that's the first step they add. Once the beverage is made, then it goes through packaging. So now when the packaging is done, then they are adding, you know, the Coca-Cola bottle, they are um, adding the labels and, you know, the other packaging thing. So the material is added at the different point in time. They didn't add the material right at the beginning when they mix the sugar. That was the first process. So material is added at a different point in time in many manufacturing uh, facilities. So that drives the cost that also drives uh, the equivalent units. Okay, so they depend on when mm, the costs are incurred in the production process. Now we have two methods to calculate the equivalent units and also assign costs to complete and partially completed units. So one method is the weighted average method, which is easier uh, between those two. The other method is the FIFO method or first in first out method. Okay, so in a weighted average method, you calculate cost for all the units that are completed till date, which is the units you have in the beginning inventory which is what you brought from the prior period, right? So if this is March and you brought some units from February, you haven't completed them in February. So that was the ending inventory of February became the beginning inventory of March. So those units you are gonna complete, but also the current units that you added during March. So you're going to add those, right? If it's the previous year, then the ending inventory of previous year or beginning inventory of this year plus how many units you added in the current period or what cost you added during the current period. So you're going to add together in a weighted average method, and then you're going to work on that, okay? Um, in a FIFO method, on the other hand, you only consider first in, first out. So that means if you have worked on some units in the prior period, you're not gonna consider them reworking again. So you're not gonna add the cost during this period because you assume that the cost that is incurred in the prior period has already been incurred. You don't have to add that cost again, even if the units are sitting in the beginning inventory. So you will only add the cost that you added during the current period. So that is different from your weighted average. Weighted average, even the partially finished goods from the prior period that are sitting in the beginning inventory, you will consider all of those costs that you incur in the prior period in those units as a current period cost. And you're going to add in the current period cost as well. So current period cost plus beginning cost, and you're going to add them together. And same as the equivalent units. In a FIFO, if you incur the cost in the prior period, you're going to discard that only cost that you're going to con uh, incur in the current period will be considered. So in the partially completed units, if they are 75% done in the prior period, 25% you're going to work on this period, then you will only add cost of those 25% that you're going to add during this period. So that's how it differs from um, your weighted average. In weighted average, you will consider 100% cost from the prior period of the units that are sitting in the beginning inventory. All right, so if you don't have any ending inventory in the prior period, that means everything that you're going to incur, you're going to incur in the current period, all the costs you're going to incur are going to be incurred in the current period, all the units you start, it's going to be the just only current period. In that case, whether you use weighted average method or you use FIFO method, they will both give you the same equivalent units, right? This is only and only if you don't have any ending inventory from the prior period or the beginning inventory from the current period, right? Ending becomes the beginning. Then you will uh, have the same equivalent units under both methods. Otherwise, you're gonna have a different equivalent units only because the FIFO considered what is incurred in the prior period should not be added during this period. Whereas weighted average brings everything from the prior period. Okay. So we prepare cost of production report, just like we prepare the cost of goods manufactured report in the job order costing system. So we prepare cost of production report for each process or for each department. It consists of two parts. The first part deals with the units 
and the second part deals with cost. All right. I divided those units and cost parts into five step. Um, so first two deals with units and the last three deals with cost. So in the step one, you determine whole units or physical units, and then you calculate equivalent units. Once you calculate that, the unit part is done and you start with the cost part. And in step three, you determine the total cost to account for, right? And the total cost to account for uh, is used to calculate the cost per equivalent unit, which is step four. So what you do is you need information from number three and number two to calculate cost per equivalent unit. So you find cost and then you divide by the equivalent unit and that, that's how you determine cost per equivalent unit. And then you use the cost per equivalent unit that you calculated in step four to assign cost to completed and partially completed units in step number five, right? So transferred out units are completed units and partially completed units are the ones that are in ending, universe, uh, ending work in process inventory. So you use the cost per equivalent unit that you calculate number four to assign cost to completed and partially completed units. And that completes our cost of production report. Now how you make cost of production report and how to uh, solve a problem using a FIFO method and weighted average method, I'll be discussing this in my other videos please check and subscribe my channel for other videos and live updates thank you for watching my video